What's up, Odoers? It's wonderful to see you again as always. Today, we're continuing our journey through the manufacturing app with a tutorial about one of its most essential features, work centers. You see, manufacturing complicated products often requires processing a variety of different operations. These operations are often so different that it just doesn't make sense to process them at a single location. Using the work centers feature, we can set up specialized locations configured with the equipment needed to produce our products. So let's jump in now to see how the work center function works in Odoo. All right, in order to use work centers, we need to make sure that the work order setting is enabled. This allows us to split manufacturing orders and MOs into smaller operations and carry those operations out at specific work centers. So I'll jump into the manufacturing application, click on configuration, and then head down to settings. At the very top of the page, we wanna make sure that the work order setting is enabled. I've already done so, but make sure you enable it in your database as well. And as always, don't forget to click save anytime you make a change in a setting. With that done, let's head over to the work center's overview page of the manufacturing application by clicking the overview button at the top of the menu. If you've enabled the work order setting, this is the first page you'll see every time you open the manufacturing app. If the setting is disabled, the manufacturing homepage defaults to a list of all of our open MOs. Don't worry though, you can still view that list by simply clicking on operations and then down to manufacturing orders. The work center's overview page shows one card for each work center we have configured in our database. Let's look at the card for assembly line here, for example. Here we can see the number of work orders that are ready to be launched, as well as the number of work orders that are late. And lastly, the overall OEE percentage, which represents how efficient the work center is. Now, if I click on the work orders button of the card, I can see all of the work orders that are ready to be processed for this specific work center. And if I go back and click on the monitor, which is the right of the work orders button, I can see the same work orders displayed of the work center, but now in the shop floor module instead. Check out our shop floor tutorials to learn how to process MOs and work orders using the module. However, let's go back for now and let's go ahead and create a brand new work center. And I'll go ahead and start doing that by clicking on configuration and then clicking on our work centers button. The work centers page shows a list of each work center in our database, along with a few of their configuration settings. As you can see, we have two assembly lines, a drill station and a finish station. Let's say we just introduced a brand new product that requires a table saw to manufacture. To address this need, I'll need to create a new work center simply by clicking new. And let's go ahead and name this work center something simple like saw station. I'll also give this work center a unique code to help distinguish it from the other work centers. And let's go with something like saw one. Perfect. Now we can also add tags in the tag field to further categorize this work center. For now, I'll just go ahead and add saw to this to keep it simple. And to the right of it, we also have the working hours field, which allows me to set the period during which the work center is operational. Right now, the field is set to the standard 40 hour work week. I can adjust this working period or create a new one, but let's go ahead and leave it to the standard one for now as we'll be covering work center working hours in another video. Next, we have the alternative work centers field. Here I can specify the other work centers where work orders can be assigned to this center that can be carried out in the event that this specific one is unavailable. However, this is the only saw station I have, so I'm just gonna leave this blank for now. If we scroll down to the general information tab, we have a bunch of settings that determine the estimated duration of work orders is calculated as well as the cost of operating the work center. We cover all those options in another video too. However, I would like to point out our allowed employees field. This is used to determine which employees are allowed to sign in and operate this work center. If I leave it blank, all employees are allowed to use it. But if I add specific employees in this field, only those employees will be allowed. Now, this table saw is a pretty dangerous piece of equipment, and only one employee is allowed to use it, Jim Joe Kelly. So I'm going to go ahead and add Jim Joe Kelly to this field. Now, for the specific capacities and maintenance tabs, we'll also cover those in other videos. So let's go ahead and just jump over to the equipment tab. This is used to specify the equipment that's assigned to this work center. So let's go ahead and add the required table saw here. And to do that, all I have to do is click add a line tick the option next to table saw in the pop-up, and then I'll add it by clicking select. All right, this work center is set up and ready for use. Now, if we return to the overview page, we can see our brand new card has appeared here for our saw station. Now that the work center is set up, we can add it to bill of materials and use it to carry out work orders when those bill of materials are used to create a manufacturing order. 
To learn how to use those, make sure to check out our Bill of Materials Basics video if you haven't already. And there you have it, folks. You now know how to set up a brand new work center in the manufacturing app. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you next time.